Check, check, one, two, one, two, testing. Testing, one, two, test, 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 testing. Testing. Pretty good. It's good. Check, check, check. Yeah, test, test. test. Good. How much time? Hello? Anybody? Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Richard Hunter Show. Heard afternoons 4 to 6 on 1360 AM and broadcasting live right now. As we do every Friday afternoon, poolside from the men's club, I-35 and Northwest Highway is uh, all you need to put into Google Maps to come join us. Probably don't even have to Google that, right? I-35 and Northwest Highway, where the men's club is and where the all-you-can-eat crawfish boil is uh, about to get underway. Four to seven out here poolside. We're out here broadcasting live between now and six o'clock. Come on out and join us. We've got giveaways. We've got a party poolside, even uh, even though the weather is a tad inclement. I tell you, I got no greater text message today than the one that I received from the men's club saying, rain or shine, crawfish boil is uh, in effect. I believe I still have it right here. Rain or shine, crawfish boil is in uh, in effect. So everybody come on out and join us poolside. We're going to have a great time out here at uh, the men's club. Now, uh, we have a fun show in store. We're going to be joined by uh, a couple of on-site guests. I figure uh, Turley producing out here on site as always. We have, we've been on uh, 1360 two weeks. Are we completing? Agreed? Oh, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, we've been more or less freak-free. <laughs> and uh, well, we're, we're going to make up for lost time today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring uh, the Metroplex's own Hansel von Quinzer out here, the man who every day of his life dresses head to toe in his Jeffersonian colonial regalia, the velvet top coats, the breeches, the buckle shoes, the powdered wig, the tri-cornered hat. He'll be out here. We've got a new uh, new bit with him, a new uh, benchmark, as we like to say in radio, that we're going to be rolling out with him for a test drive. He'll be out here. And that's not all, because he will be in the company of the Lizard Man. Now, you've probably seen the Lizard Man if you enjoy, like, uh, National Geographic or Discovery Channel, and you just don't realize you've seen him until I give a little bit of a description. He's uh, He's slowly turning himself into a lizard. Early. He's, to my knowledge, the only person out there doing that. You'd think there would be a ton of them. He, uh, he has, is slowly tattooing every part of his body green. He's got, uh, he's, he's forked his tongue already. That was done a long time ago. He is, uh, he's got these, like, crazy eyebrow implants, like the little bumpy things like lizards have. Uh, basically, he is one British accent away from being Geico's spokesperson. He's committed. Right. That is serious commitment. I remember uh, inviting Lizard Man to a party of ours way back when, and uh, Greg Williams, the hammer, was there, uh, and I, one of our old coworkers. And I remember him looking across the room at the Lizard Man and saying to me, that is commitment. That right there, that is, uh, there's no turning back on that kind of commitment. Now, 
Uh, hopefully you can come out here to the men's. Why are they here, by the way? Well, they're uh, they're in town for a party tonight at Lizard Lounge. We're going to be uh, talking about. That's going to be a freak fest out there. And uh, he's going to be joining us live here at Poolside. That is undoubtedly going to turn some heads out here. Uh, if you can't join us live, and I'm going to be disappointed if you can't, but if you can't join us live, then you can join us virtually live. You can stream us right now online at richardhuntershow.com. Live streaming video. That's right. We have strategically placed the camera so as not to uh, compromise anybody's anonymity and or state of nudity out here at the men's club. But you can uh, stream live video right now at richardhuntershow.com and listen along. And uh, right now, if you go to richardhuntershow.com, you'll just see me. But uh, in, uh, I don't know, probably 30 minutes or so right here, right where I've got my uh, arm around an invisible figure, that's where the lizard man will be sitting. So uh, come on out and join us or log on to richardhuntershow.com for that. Uh, we'll also be hearing from Katie Darrell of TMZ.com. But I, I want to start things off. Uh, with you on, on the phone. What are you pointing to? We're good? Phones, yeah. Okay. I want to start things off uh, uh, on the phones with you at 214-631-1360. That's 214-631-1360. Toll free throughout the Metroplex or an 800 number that I don't have committed to memory yet. We'll uh, maybe have that IM to me. Uh, talking a little bit about the latest news today, and it seems like there is news coming at a, at a daily clip now, Turley, about gay marriage. Did you see the latest one to jump on the bandwagon? Not, I did not. Not literally, not in terms no. of in entering into a gay marriage, but in terms of backing it. It's uh, New York State Governor David Patterson, the visually impaired one. He announced today that he is going to pursue legislation in New York State to legalize gay marriage. And uh, I have a new theory. I have a new political theory that I'm ready to roll out. Are you ready for this? Bring it. You ready for my uh, new Bring political it. theory? All right. Uh, we certainly know the, the, the phrase out of the closet, right, in reference to gay people who are not openly gay, not publicly gay, keeping their, uh, their, their, uh, their true inclinations a secret. Well, I think what we're starting to see are closeted politicians that are coming out of the closet. Not closeted in the sense of homosexuality, but closeted in the sense of supporters of gay rights and supporters of gay marriage who were afraid because of political consequences to back gay marriage. And now they're seeing that the tide has turned. They're seeing the election of President Obama. They're seeing states like we saw uh, with Vermont uh, within the last week, legalize gay marriage legislatively, and that is key. A lot of this up to now has been a constitutional fight, and Vermont said, let's just take a vote. All those in favor, that's more than all those opposed, great, pass, gay marriage, legal. Vermont did it. Iowa's Supreme Court struck down a ban on gay marriage, calling it unconstitutional. Why is that key? Other than the obvious, well, it's key because it's Iowa. This is the first state in the heartland of America to adopt this type of thinking. So now we've, we've, we've not only seen the battles out on the West Coast in California where it was not legal and then legal and not legal again, I guess. Stay tuned on that. And not only on the eastern seaboard, the New England movement, but now a state like Iowa is, uh, is becoming progressive. And I think what's happening is that politicians from, you know, even the, even the, the Democratic office holders who were, you know, the, for the longest time, the, the, the safe way of thinking has been the sentiment that you heard John Kerry and John Edwards and Barack Obama, for that matter, echo. Well, I, I'm uh, opposed to gay marriage, but I'm in favor of civil unions so as not to fall into the political bear trap, pun intended. Uh, but now, I think now that the Obama administration has taken hold, and I think now that there is this, the, as I said, a, a turning of the tide and a groundswell of support 
for gay rights and, and, and gay marriage moving beyond civil unions, moving beyond Brown versus the Board of Education style separate but equal debate, I think things are really changing with this. And uh, we're going to air an interview next week. I got I got to tell a little backstory. I had a kind of a uh, a harrowing time getting here, Turley. I haven't told you the story yet. No, I'm still uh, trying to adjust. <laughs> I wanted to save it for the air. Okay. You're still trying to adjust? Yes. To my presence? Yeah, well, it's everything. It's, it's, well, no, I've still Because your heroin experience you do, getting you here. So you don't last have second. to explain. I, I've seen people have to try to adjust for some time in my presence. So sometimes it can take a little while to settle in. Um, but I had uh, an interview scheduled to tape today. And I say we're going to air this sometime next week. Our, our uh, good gay friend, Del Shores, who's the creator of uh, Sorted Lives, the, the movie, the play the TV series, which, of course, was my breakout vehicle last season on the Logo Network. Uh, five seconds of television breakout. Uh, over two episodes, sir, uh, I, which uh, constitutes a recurring role. I will, not have you, I will not have you diminish my contribution. Uh, so I had an interview set to tape with Dell. He's coming back in town in uh, May to do his one-man show. But he had another uh, announcement. He's going to bring the Sorted Lives cast, so some of the members of the Sorted Lives cast, to the Majestic Theater stage in September, and they're going to do a whole, uh, it's uh, called a, a Sorted Affair, I believe is how they're presenting it. So we tried, what do you hear this crazy radio experimentation we tried thoroughly? We, I get him on the phone. And then we talk, but periodically he's he's on his iPhone and he's he's patching through various members of the Sorted Lives cast, and there are, I don't I, so he's telling you to hold on a second, right? And while he's telling me to hold on, I'm talking about how you can uh, you know get the Wonder Radio app and stream our uh, show on the iPhone, or how you can get the uh, UStream.tv app and watch it. So you know we're 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 keeping it all. Uh, we're keeping it all uh, thematic. So then he he comes back on, and he's got Caroline Ray. You know Caroline Ray. Yeah. She was host of Biggest Loser for a long time. Did she, she have was a television a, show, too? She, she, she had the Caroline Ray show. She took over for uh, Rosie O'Donnell. She was on uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. She, you, know, you know her. If you see her, you, you know her. Uh, he had her on. She was in the middle of doing some kind of breastfeeding or diaper changing. It reminded me of my phone calls with you, Turley. You know, sometimes when I'm talking to you and just the background, daddy, 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 daddy. It's amazing to me how you can just tune that out. I just tuned that out right now. Were you saying something? Yeah, yeah, I was. You were totally focused on what I was saying. So she had that going on. So she jumps on, and then she jumps off again. Then he calls up Leslie Jordan, and we all know Leslie Jordan. From He's the four-foot-tall gayest man on the planet leslie jordan who was on will and grace oh him yeah did you watch uh, uh, uh boston legal he I had a role on that yeah. for a while he was the guy that kept killing the old women with a frying pan very gay he is well he gets him on and i realize this is where there's going to have to be creative editing on this thing and i'm tying it all back to gay marriage because dell is for the moment legally married in uh, california to his husband, and uh, we were talking a lot about the state of gay marriage and where this whole thing is going to go. But we get Leslie Jordan on, and I don't think Dell told him we were on the air. I don't think he told him he was on the radio. Uh, I did think he just start he, cussing? Well, here's what happened. Uh, he, you know, Leslie uh, knows me uh, through Dell, and Dell says, hey, I've got Big Dick on the phone. And Leslie said something incredibly inappropriate to me that we can't put on the radio did let's just say did he get really excited yeah <laughs> and uh and you and, and dell says leslie we're on the radio and he goes you didn't tell me that <laughs> so we're gonna have to clean that up but i had a, a lengthy conversation with with both of them being uh california residents about where gay marriage is going to go in california i think that's an interesting question because just as quickly as Prop 8 came along, and, and you know, it looks like they're going to grandfather in the, I think it's like 18,000 that are married out there. They're going to grandfather them in, but but try to screw the new ones. It, it may be able to come up in a vote again and just pass the legislature the way that it did in Vermont. The governor's going to have to sign it into law. But I really do think that what's happening is politicians, I think, 
I think in some cases it's more genuine, like David Patterson, for example, uh, giving his uh, announcement today, said that growing up there was a, a, a in Harlem there was a gay couple that was close to his parents. He considered them two uncles, and so that was sort of his. He never really experienced gay prejudice, I guess, uh, directly in the home because of that. That was kind of his first affiliation with. So I think it's it's genuine on the part of him. I think on uh, on the part of other politicians, it's more uh, it's 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 more strategic. They're realizing that uh, it's just not that much of a political risk anymore, and I think that's great. Let's go to. Uh, Oh, we got, I'll tell you what, tell, uh, tell people on the phones to hold on back there. We'll get the calls next. We've got to get to some other things next as well, uh, including the political hard drive of the day. we got that. we got Katie Darrell of TMZ.com coming up. And we have freaks out here in person on location at the Men's Club I-35 and uh, Northwest Highway in Dallas. You can join us poolside. You can stream the video online at RichardHunterShow.com. More next when we return on Rational Radio, 1360 AM. Rich will be right back before you know it. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss anything. Are you an inventor, or do you know an inventor who would like to attempt to have an invention or idea patented and submitted to industry? For free information on how to proceed, phone toll-free, 1-800-711-7107. InventHelp, America's number one invention company, has inventor's information you can have free. Record your invention's date of origination, plus get an informative brochure and other material of interest to new inventors. From the company whose patent referral services have helped secure more than 7,000 patents. Hey, guys. Learn how to get your free information by dialing 1-800-711-7107. That's 1-800-711-7107. Even if you only have an idea for improving an existing product and don't know where to go with it, you'll want this free inventor's information. It shows how InventHelp may assist you in trying to patent your invention and submit it to industry. It's a free call, so call now. 1-800-711-7107. That's 1-800-711-7107. Hello, anybody? Right wing neocon. Why? Loudmouth. Michael Brownie Brown. This is Jackie Jeff. In Australia? Screw us. That's so interesting. Hi, I'm Jackie Jeff from the Jackie Jet Show. And I'm John Nodo. Last year, our show changed the lives of millions of listeners. This year, we plan a further verbal violation of your senses. We're Station. offering you a front row seat to our freak show. So sit back and enjoy. Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 3 p.m. Here on 1360 Rational Radio. We could go have one heck of a time together. Profile America, Friday, April 17th. Today is Ellis Island Family History Day, established by proclamation of America's governors. It marks the day in 1907 when the highest number of immigrants were processed through the facility in New York Harbor, 11,747 men, women, and children. Ellis Island was opened in 1892 and admitted some 12 million people to the U.S. before closing in 1954, most of them at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th centuries. Today, more than 100 million people, about a third of the U.S. population, are descendants of immigrants who passed through Ellis Island. The largest number, nearly 51 million, are of German ancestry. You can find these and more facts about America from the U.S. Census Bureau online at census.gov. Go ahead. Makes no difference if your date starts at 7 or before. Be sure to listen to 1360 for the Rational Radio Report at 7 a.m. each weekday. This is Jack Bishop. and Dick. So is it something I'm doing? He sounds I turned it up. Well, no, I'm talking about for the everybody else to hear. That, the uh, out speaker. I'm trying to think. Are you doing traffic? Yeah. Uh, there's not really a whole lot I can think of that you can do. I mean, can you? Can they hear them? 
Yeah, it's just I have to I crank it up a lot louder than I had to last week. I don't know why. But the music, when you guys send it, sounds great. Okay, I'll change one thing over here. We'll try that and see what happens. Well, no, it shouldn't be from you guys, though. It should be on my end, right? Well, that's the thing. Your microphones are not going directly into the audio. Ah, I got you. I have to look and see if there's a way I could do that. Uh, that makes sense then, okay. It's, it's. We're in Dallas. We have, right now, we have one minute. It's funny the way it's set up. It's like you send us audio, we send it back to you, and that's what you play. It's, it's real weird. I don't like it. Right now over in Dallas. It is at 445. 30 seconds. That traffic sounded okay, volume-wise? Sounded fine. How's the stream looking and sounding? It's fine. Audio's fine? Fine. 10, okay. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. You're going the wrong way! Right now over in Dallas we have an accident westbound 635 at Jupiter blocking the left two lanes and traffic is backed up westbound 183 at Amon Carter Boulevard. I'm Jaron Nyhart. Your next traffic update is at 445. Congratulating liberal celebrities for voting against their own economic self-interest. We're back to the Richard Hunter Show. We are back to the Richard Hunter Show, broadcasting live. Thank you, Strip Club DJ, from the Men's Club, I-35 and Northwest Highway, poolside. Come on out and join us. The all-you-can-eat crawfish boil is uh, about to get underway. That's right, rain or shine, and right now it's shining. There's no rain. No, if you log on to uh, richardhuntershow.com and check out our live video stream, which I'm, tolding, uh, I'm uh, told is coming through Perfect. crystal clear. Yes. Very good. You can actually see the sun reflecting off my face, which is actually something I try to prevent. It's a good thing I put on my... Uh, 68 proof sunblock before I left the house. You're white, but on the uh, camera, on the stream, uh -huh. you look really white. Well, that's my vampire skin. <laughs> so fortunately, I lathered up before I came out. This right here, this on Fridays when we're poolside at the men's club, even though I am shaded by a patio, I get more sunlight in these two hours than I get all the rest of the week, I'll bet that's you. That's sad. Well, it's a lifestyle. Speaking of lifestyle, the Freaks are uh, on their way out. They're going to be out here uh, right around the top of the hour. Hansel von Quinzer and uh, the Lizard Man. By the way, for those streaming at richardhuntershow.com, I'll hold up a flyer of uh, the Lizard Man, if you can see him down there at the bottom. He, uh, he's an interesting character. You've seen him on uh, National Geographic Channel and uh, Discovery Channel and the like. Katie Darrell of TMZ.com still to come. Uh, log on to RichardHunterShow.com and Twitter us out here. You can uh, or tweet us, I guess I should say. Follow us at uh, Twitter.com forward slash Hunter Show, and we can get your messages that way. Or uh, we can do it the old-fashioned way via telephone, 214-631-1360, like uh, we're about to do here with uh, Ross. Ross, are you with me? What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Ross? How are you doing, sir? Uh, Good uh, to hear you back on the radio. Thank you, and I appreciate you calling in. What's on your mind today? Well, first of all, I've uh, I've been uh, catching up on your show on the podcast. Thank on, you. Uh, your website. Excellent. And uh, I was listening to the one, I just finished the one that you did on Wednesday. Okay. Uh, and that auditory hard drive where uh, Rick Perry was on there with the whole uh, should we secede or should we not. Yes, I remember. Okay. Uh, Turley had said something about uh, his accent, and I swear, I don't know if uh, if I had just never listened to Rick Perry before or if it's gotten worse, but that man could almost be an auditory doppelganger for GW. Yeah, now that's something I've always associated with him. I don't know how much side-by-side -side comparison I've done uh, 
between him and George W. Bush, but I, I've always thought of him as having a, a Texas accent. Turley was saying that he had I never detected that on. before. Yeah, I think he's pouring it on just because of you know the whole succession. Hey, you know we're Texans. And well, either way, yeah. it's yeah. Either, either way, it's not exactly in vogue. I, I would think Ross, it might be a good time to try to start sounding more black. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's right. And hey, um, <laughs> if I could just have one more second of, of your time, um, about the uh, the the equal uh, equal protection for uh, gay marriage and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say I I know you're agnostic, but you know, thank God or Allah or the flying spaghetti monster that this is uh, this is getting more attention state by state because. I mean, you you brought up Brown versus the Board of Education, but the the whole finding in that in that was that separate is not equal, mm. and uh, it's about time that some states at least are enacting equal rights for everybody. Yeah, because Ross, you know, my, my thought process is is, is this uh, uh, above and beyond anything else when it comes to legality and when it comes to legislation and when it comes to to politics. I'm interested in practicality. There is nothing more expensive and futile than an ineffective law. And I think we see this on a daily basis with, with the, the war on drugs as uh, 420 is right around the corner on Monday. You know, uh, I'm, I may be the only, I may be the only non-pot smoking member of normal you'll ever meet, but the reason I am is because I don't like paying for it. It is a waste of money. Uh, not to mention a deprivation of people who could benefit uh, from, from it uh, medically and medicinally. And, and the reason I draw the analogy to marijuana is with, with the gay marriage debate. You know, I heard, I was listening to Ed Schultz uh, earlier today, and I heard a, a, a minister call in, and this was somebody who still said he believed marriage was between a man and a woman and that whole thing. But he also said this. He said, you know, laws don't curtail behavior or, or lifestyle choices and he said his interpretation of a of, of the, the Christian philosophy is that you make your personal choices you you preach your own truth but you don't you let other people uh, make their choices here's what I want to know as a as a straight married guy Ross I, I, I tell people who argue against gay marriage I say all right I'm listening you know I, I my ears are open but you've right. got to tell me, how this threatens to to destabilize my own marriage, and they never do. They're, they're, it always comes back to them. It, it to me, what it comes down to is they want to be official. They they want if you have something, they want the 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 better version of it. You know, whatever the uh, if 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 uh, they want to have the the authentic Louis Vuitton luggage, and if you're gay, you got to carry the knockoff. Yeah, you got to carry the Kmart special. Yeah, because you know if, so. if we if if I shop at the dollar store, I'm going to look down on the guy who shops at the 99 cent store. I want to feel better than than somebody. And to me, that is a real personal insecurity. I I would worry about the stability of their marriage. Now, I, let me throw one other thing at you, Ross, and get your thoughts here. You know, sure. the other the other thing I say to people who would argue against gay marriage uh, on and it's always on a on a religious basis i say well how about we do this yeah and you pointed out you know me i'm agnostic but i said how about i'm willing to meet you halfway uh uh person against gay marriage i will <laughs> i will give you your opposition but in turn what we're going to do is we're going to get real biblical we're going to kick it old testament and what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate all legal marriages because there were no legal marriages in the Bible. People would go up on top of a mountain with some spiritual guy and, all right, you say this and you, you're that and you're married and that's it. And it wasn't until some uh, uh, charlatan down at the courthouse figured out that they could score 50 bucks a pop by giving you the official version of the marriage that it even became a legal matter to begin with. So how about we just get real biblical and we dissolve them all? Right. Yeah, you know, um, it's all... It was all for profit when it started being official, and so. still is. And you, you know who would be opposed? You know who would be opposed to that theory I just threw out? Divorce lawyers. Yeah. Well, they have to get a new occupation. That'd be the end of the business. You know hey, what I'm uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on this one. I mean, uh, actually, I, I got to take something away from you, BDH. Okay. Uh, you're you're not the only white married person who believes in gay marriage. Oh. And and 
And that, that I, I know that I'm not I'm not you know alone in that one. Yeah. Uh, but you're also not the only non pot smoking member of normal. You're in. I'm in there, buddy. Good for you, Ross. See that? Let me tell you something. That's what the marijuana reform movement needs is more uh, straight edge. Because the problem is the pot smokers uh, tend not to be quite as motivated as you and I do as I paint with a broad oh. brush. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Very I got gotcha. you. We'll hear gotcha. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 but, you know, in seriousness, though, I'll tell you something else about it, is it's always looked at as, as a, a special interest lobby and, oh, well, this guy only wants it legalized because he's a pothead and he smokes pot. So it's good that there are people. You know, it's good just the same way it's it's important for straight people to speak out in favor of gay marriage. It's important for non-pot smokers to make the argument for marijuana reform for other reasons than the fact that we want to use it. Let's talk about how, how costly it is to keep it illegal. Let's talk about how it uh, what it uh, does to deprive uh, you know, terminally ill uh, cancer patient. So that's good that you're waiting. You know what? Uh, you and I, we shouldn't stop there. You and I should launch a recruiting drive to recruit other non-pot smoking members into normal, uh, N-O-R-M-L dot org, and it's very cheap org. to join. You That's right. It. All right, man. Hey, great you to hear it. from you, and thanks for the call. Y'all have fun out there, man. Have a good time. Right on, right on. Hmm. Sexylofts.com just im me that that was a low blow. <laughs> but it, it didn't I'm not sure what he meant by yeah, that. I don't know what does that mean. Well, I'm just saying that I think it helps to have a uh, an upstanding spokesperson like me out in front of a movement. You know what I'm saying? You know, I I need to get Deepak to join my friend there because uh-huh. he's straight as a, I, I mean, I've tried him to try stuff, get him to try stuff, and he just won't do it. He's very much like you mm-hmm. in that way. You yeah. know, how I'm always pressuring you to drink and smoke and stuff and right. you just look at me and you're like no 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 i look I at you as weak yeah exactly he's like Pah, whatever yeah. well i tried the same thing with deepak and he won't do it he's just straight laced as he can so now you know what my goal is to get him to join normal they make cool t-shirts yes. got that going for you and you'll love the caliber of chicks that'll come up and talk to you if they see a pot leaf on your shirt. Eventually, they'll be disappointed. Well, he's single looking to mingle, it's too. A, so. it's, a, it's a very good uh, icebreaker. Uh, our phone number, 214-631-1360. That's 214-631-1360. Somebody IM me the uh, 800 number back there, if you will, too, please, because uh, for some reason I don't have that one uh, committed to memory yet. Would that be, you know, now, now Turley, you're a, you're a parent. Would you feel comfortable making the case to the whoever you're going to be hanging out with at the PTA, just being very upfront about why you favor marijuana legalization? Yeah. Why w- I mean, why would I not be comfortable with it? I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you're in favor of it that you're going to push your kid to, oh, hey, you know, I, I, mm-hmm. it's okay to smoke it. Don't worry about it. I mean, when, when they're adult, when they're 18 and they're adult, they can make their own decisions. Before, you know, before then, obviously, you know, you're under my roof, my rules. That well, I would I, w- I would expect you to be comfortable with making the case. I'm just saying that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that even if they, you know what, there's, there's a lot of arguments, I think, that people just don't want to get involved in. And that's kind of one of them. I think that, well, as that a parent, that, that would be the one right there. It's like, well, that means you're in favor, with, you're okay with your, if your kid smokes it. I mean, that's the very first thing they would say to you. Well, you know what, I'm not, I, I w- it's, it's not a matter of being okay with whether or not they're doing it. It's a matter of whether or not, if they do do it, you want them involved in, in something that is considered a criminal activity. You know what comes along with criminal activity is not only the, the, the risk of being uh, sentenced to jail or prison, but also a criminal element. This is another point that I make. You know, if and we'll talk more about this on Monday, it being uh, 420. We'll split the day between that, uh, remembering Hitler's birthday and Columbine. But, <laughs> well, that's a hell of a combination. Well, it's a full show. Yeah. <laughs> it's a full show right there. Uh, but the, the, the criminal aspect of this can, cannot be understated because, if it, you know, we've all been, or been around it. I was certainly around it in high school and in bands and all the rest of that. And who do you get pot from? Some shady pot dealer, right? Listen, if the government got in the pot business... You would see a going out of business sale with dr- drug dealers like oh, never yeah. before. Because you know what would happen? The value of the the black market value of their inventory, the bottom would fall out of it. That's why it's that's why it's expensive. That's why there's so much money involved in it. Well, and think of whatever company 
would uh, sign up to, you know, package it like cigarettes, how much money they would make off of it. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. All right, I tell you what. Uh, we got some more people holding on the phones at uh, 214-631-1360, sexyloss.com. Ask them to stick with us through the break, and we'll get to them next as uh, the Richard Hunter Show continues broadcasting poolside from the men's club. Come out and join us. All-you-can-eat crawfish boil, I-35 and Northwest Highway. More next on 1360 AM. Stepping away from the microphone, get ahead to the bathroom, take a brief pause for the cause. Richard Hunter. slice of heaven. With over 25 gourmet pizzas from Olive Oil's Meat Monster to our fabulous veggie pizzas, we'll satisfy every pizza lover's taste. Olive Oil's Pizzeria always delivers. Call 972-480-9555 and ask about our entrees and getting decadent desserts. That number again is 972-480-9555. Hey, Sean. Log on to oliveoilspizzeria.com. You're not getting all of them. Oh, by the way, uh, what's up, man? Everything we're saying right now Enjoy is going the over the uh, stream. And experience consistency, For some reason, and I just got an email from Jaron saying you can hear everything Hawthorne we're saying. Oh, okay. So, hey, what's up, Jaron? What's up, WebStream? I guess yeah. we'll just do a separate show for them. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Did he so, so, say anything incriminating? No, no, he said everything was fine. He just heard us say... Is the web stream okay? Is the video okay? And I didn't talk about your girlfriend or anything. No, no, you didn't say anything about my girlfriend. Don't say anything about mine, for God's <laughs> sakes. Um, okay, Sean, I'm hearing some type of flutter in our ear. Sean ran a 7-Eleven. Oh, well, okay. Hmm. Oh, no, just got back. I guess he wanted to check the web stream down there. Crisp salads, tasty sandwiches, mouth-watering cooked order steaks, and oh, so much more. That's I see Richard on his iPhone. Located at 4901 Beltline Road in Dallas, or look for them on the web at bjsrestaurant.com. Looking for a unique and fun gift for someone special? Come to Texas Teddy Bear Factory in historic downtown Grapevine. We have ready-made <laughs> bears or you can custom Jeremy make your own. With unique Weed outfits and gaze. And Must be the Richard Hunter Show. Furry Sounds friends. good. <laughs> Come see us for a zoo full of fun and let us host your next birthday party. 817-416-4399 or visit us at texasteddybearfactory.com. Texas Star Transmission specializes in transmission repair. Texas Star Transmission offers free diagnostics, safeguard transmission service, oil changes, a friendly bilingual staff, and any work you need on your transmission. Go to Texas Star Transmissions for your automotive needs. Texas Star Transmission is located at 1301 South Stemmons Freeway on the corner of Bel Air and I-35. Call Raphael at 972-221-6097. That's 972-221-6097. When you want them to say, I've never seen anything like this before, give the gift of forever flowers from Stems, located in historic downtown Grapevine, Texas. Our unique arrangements of flowers, birds, fish, and animals appeal to everyone. Handcrafted from wood, these one-of-a-kind pieces will last a hey, lifetime. Hey, Sean. Stems is open seven days a week. Yes. We're hearing a fluttering in our ear. Call 817-488-2204. I don't know why it's like a purr like almost. It's the, it's the nature of the stream between the two machines. Hi, I'm Terry, the owner of Power From that to the, to the headphone uh, jack? Yes. Okay. So it's not it's done sounding done like that on the air then? The no. Okay. No, no, it didn't it do it last week. I don't know why. Maybe it's the cable or something. You probably have something turned up louder than last week. Lasagnas. Cheesy breads and Who salads. Knows. Papa Murphy's taken and bake pizza in Allen. We're located at 1208 East Second Drive, Suite 6 at Allen Heights. Ooh, between, that, and between that and between that and the uh, AllenOnline.com. For us Master not sounding as loud out house. here, but now the phone the callers and the music there, coming in clear. Frisco, 3301 yeah. Road, Suite Number Eight. Yeah, Master Beer offers an endless amount of our incredible and, and it sounds good on the air, so that's beef, fine. Chicken, lamb, and pork. The variety of hot and cold side dishes. Sounds really good on the air. Matter of fact, I heard the transition. 
they're coming in from 7 Eleven. And I got to tell you, JD over here did an excellent job. It's not absolutely awesome. Preston Road. Go online to www.mastergrill.com. Again, that's Mastergrill. We have an accident westbound 185 of one, one minute. You need a road warrior to get you on your way. Leonard's Wrecker Service will tow your Thanks, car dude. to your repair. We have an accident. In a 505. If you're in the DFW area. Leonard's mm. Wrecker Service will be there for you with less waiting and lower costs, providing service for more than 20 years. Call 214 232 5295. 214 232 5295. We have an accident. Hi, this is Leonard Jackson. Charlie. Leonard's Wrecker Service. Yeah. I'll be there for you 23 7. Turn that down just a little bit. All right. 30 seconds. The views and opinions of the following programming. Are not necessarily the Is that better? Staff yes. You're listening to the blow torch of truth in North Texas. 1360. The ladies are scared to come out here because it's cloudy. Uh-oh. From 1360 KMNY. They're the only station. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have an accident westbound 183 at County Line Road. Two lanes are blocked off there. And the wreck eastbound 635 at Jupiter is now off to the right shoulder. I'm Jaron Nyhart. Your next traffic update is at 505. From politicians to pornographers, you might be surprised to find out how much they have in common. We're back to the Richard Hunter Show. Broadcasting live poolside from the men's club, as we do Fridays. We're doing it again today, and we want you to come out and join us. The uh, all-you-can-eat crawfish boil getting underway. Come on out, 5,000 pounds of crawfish. I think I that smell was the it number cooking. I saw. Uh, come on out and join us, the men's club, I-35 and Northwest Highway. Always a party, and, uh, of course, it's been raining off and on today, but not only is the uh, sun uh, peeking through. Turley, you were saying that, uh, it was it was overcast just a little while ago, and you were saying that the ladies are scared to come out when it's cloudy. Yes, that's like it's like my dog Pumpkin. Oh, he gets <laughs> nervous when uh, it it gets overcast because he doesn't like storms. But uh, there's a lady right there. See the sun came out. Mm, that is a lady. Here they come, and I just saw a beach ball go flying into oh, the pool. Gosh. So where a beach ball where a uh, beach ball lands, a naked chick can't be far behind. I would guess. Uh, at least that's the way out here at the men's club. I don't know about your house. <laughs> so I-35 in Northwest Highway, come on out and join us, stream live video, and listen in, uncensored, as I'm told, at uh, richardhuntershow.com. Yes. We found out during the break that anything that we're saying out here during the break is is coming out over the video stream. Well, I just I just got a, uh, a a panicked message from our L.A. syndicator. Oh, really? Yeah, letting me know. <laughs> oh, that the same thing, everything you're saying online? Yeah, yeah. It's good to know he's watching. It's good It's good to know our representation's on top of the So product, is Rick though. D's all of a sudden just out there just flailing his arms around like, Oh, well, everything's okay because we didn't, we were, we were, uh, we didn't say anything incriminating. Okay. I, I didn't, I hadn't mentioned your girlfriend. Yeah. We I didn't didn't, outed you. Yeah. We're good. We're, we're okay. good. All right, back <laughs> to the phones before we get to uh, Katie Darrell of TMZ.com, still to come. Let me hear from uh, Michael at 214-631-1360 with SexyLofts.com standing by to put your calls through. Next up is Michael. Hey, Michael. Hello. Hi, hi BDS. How you doing? Great, man. Thanks for calling in. Great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to call. Um, I guess I'd be what, what you'd call one of these crazy conservatives. Okay. Uh, okay. I, well, are you, are you, are you a train hear. conductor? Are you? No, sir. Oh, okay. I thought that was you blowing the whistle there for a second. No, sir. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, so you're a crazy conservative. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, well, I was uh, listening today to, like, Ed Schultz and, and earlier because I, I kind of, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry about Is that, that, that on your That's on your end. You got me on a speaker or something? Uh, no, I don't. All right, okay. Let, let, we'll fight okay. through it. We're professionals. All right, I'm sorry about that. Right. Well, um, I kind of listen to, like, both sides. I'm, I'm a conservative. I listen to conservative radio, but I do also like to listen to rational radio here in Dallas just to kind of get both sides. Me too. And uh, today um, I heard them talking about, I guess the report was um, was given out by the Obama administration uh, talking about the tactics tactics that they used for interrogation right and um i just i'm trying to find out like 
what side would you be on? Are you against the the tactics that that, that they use? Because I hear a lot of people saying that that it's wrong what they do, and they blame Bush for the tactics. But what they don't realize is that those tactics that they do use were put in place by the Clinton administration, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. You know, I agree with the tactics that they're using, but everyone is blaming the Bush administration for these tactics, and they were they weren't in, they weren't even put in place by the Bush administration. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. So we got some ground to cover okay. here. Uh, yeah. In, in terms of the idea of, uh, I'll tell you why I'm against torture. But first, let me tell you that this is not uh, this is not a uh, a matter of compassion for me. I mean, there mm-hmm. are people in my own life that I would torture with a clear conscience. Uh, but okay. in terms of a, a strategic policy, you know, for for our military. Yes. I've never uh-huh. been in the military, and I always yeah. defer to people who have. I, I, I really do. I mean, I've got I've got strong opinions about uh, our, our our international pl- uh, policy and our war efforts and all that sort of thing. But you know, I I give a, a, a lot of weight to what people like John McCain say. I mean, he's been there, uh-huh. and he, when I hear him say, especially in the the in in the face of opposition from his own party, that he is opposed yeah. to torture, and here's why. I think that that carries a lot of weight. I believe uh, him and others who have served when they say mm-hmm. that uh, you don't get valuable, you don't get reliable information uh, in, under those circumstances because those people tell you uh, whatever you want to hear to get them to to quit. And then a further point is that I do I understand why when you're the one with the upper hand. It's tempting uh-huh. to do, and I don't feel bad for terrorists who who have mm-hmm. terrible things happening to them as a result. I don't feel bad about that, but I am very concerned uh, for for people who are on our side, like uh, mm-hmm. my cousin who just got shipped off to Afghanistan a couple of days ago. I very, you know, I worry if if he's uh, captured, and I understand mm-hmm. terrorists don't play by the same rules. But we've got a Geneva Convention for a reason, and 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 mm-hmm. if something like that does happen, if another you know Hanoi Hilton opens up or something, we need pressure. Uh, we need to be able to put pressure on uh, those people, not only from us but from the world at large, the free world at large, to push back mm-hmm. against those people. And what I fear is the first time that we try to do that from now on. That there's going to be a lot of people uh, uh, around the world, a lot of foreign governments that are going to be pointing out uh, what we did. So those are okay. all the reasons I'm worried about. I want I want you to go here, and then I want to tell you I want us to talk about what we think about uh, the uh, Eric Holder's decision to kind of let bygones be bygones. So so okay, you have the um, floor. yeah, okay, uh, basically you know I agree with you a hundred percent on on what you just said, but my problem is is that. It's it's basically it's it's looked at as this is that this was Bush's problem, and basically he's playing by the rules that the Clinton administration. I mean, why is he being blamed for you know tactics that were being put in be put in place back in '94? He had nothing to do with. How come if everyone's got such a problem with it, why is it only coming down on President Bush? And not his predecessor. Okay, you know I what? I don't well, understand that. I'll tell you why. Why I think that that is, uh, and, and, and uh-huh. I'm with you in the sense that uh, I, I think in a lot of ways, when you're trying to uh, differentiate between Republican and Democrat, uh-huh. you know, the good guy, bad guy, white hat, yeah. black hat thing. I, don't I hate think, that. Yeah, I know. I, and I, I understand, and I'm I'm for pointing uh-huh. uh, fingers of blame where they're deserved. But let me say this. Yeah. Uh, and I, there were there were plenty of things that I criticized Bill Clinton about. A lot of ways he wasn't liberal mm-hmm. enough for me. But let me say this yeah. about what you just said. Clinton, yeah. was, when 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 you're you're scrutinizing a wartime president, and particularly mm-hmm. of a preemptive invasion like George Bush uh, launched, I think he's setting himself up for much closer scrutiny. And what's happening? Is, I agree. You know, yeah, as, I agree with that. Right, as we see, and I also think it was much more systematic. I think the whole mm-hmm. Bush administration was set up so that with with him at the top, he was for a time palatable enough to the American public that the 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 real decision makers behind the scenes, the Cheneys, the Rumsfelds, the people who you couldn't really put a positive public spin on, uh, they mm-hmm. didn't have to be the the face of it. And so every time exactly. the heat got a little hot. 
People said, well, they, that George W., he seems like a nice enough guy. I don't think he would really be involved in something like that. And I think they purposely sort of, I think he went, I was talking to my grandmother about this on the phone on the way over, actually. And I said to her, I said, I think what happened, was, she was upset that, that George Bush would repeatedly say that these things weren't torture. And I said, you know, Grandma, I said, I think the reason why he was saying they weren't torture is because that's what he was told. And, and you know, mm-hmm. and Cheney and Rumsfeld, they had... Uh, operatives in place, you know, the the lawyers that would go to him and go, hey, nothing to worry about here. It's on the up and up. It's not toward, and that was good enough for him, and he'll want to hear any more about that. That's that's mm-hmm. my okay. that's my thought on your, your, your question, which I think is a good one. Okay. Now, now, well, now, I appreciate let, it. Now, wait, wait. I want to ask you one other thing. Let's, let's yes, talk sir. about uh, Eric Holder's decision here, because mm-hmm. uh, you know, on the one hand, well, and I, I think this is actually... Uh, indicative of just how much of a moderate in a lot of ways Barack Obama is, which is kind of why I snicker when people want to say, oh, my God, you know, we, we, we've elected the most liberal uh, uh, candidate we could have thought of. I, I don't think that's really true. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on the one hand, I like the idea of looking toward the future. I think it's, it's, there's a lot to get done here, and I think it's great that we're not going to get mired down in, in, in a lot of retribution. On the other hand, what I'm concerned about uh, is deterrent, Michael. I'm concerned that, mm-hmm. that people who commit uh, uh, crimes or, or, you know, lesser indiscretions, however you want to frame it, now, if they are not shown that this is going to cost them uh, or, or that there is going to be fear of retribution to, uh, uh, or, or accountability, I should say, accountability for, for future crimes committed, then they continue to do it. I think we saw that from a lot of the old Watergate retreads, you know, the, the Nixon and the Ford administration crew and all that. So I worry that, that nobody this side of Lindy England is really uh, being held accountable here. What do you think about that? I, I agree. I totally agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I voted for Bush, but I realized that, you know what, he's done some really stupid things. But, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Like, um, everyone's saying now that, um, you know, that Barack Obama is pushing us towards socialism with the bailouts and stuff. And I even I remind my friends that, you know what, Bush started this back in September with the first bailout. Oh, oh, you know, listen, and, you're, you're abs- that's such a great point, yeah. Michael. That's such a great point. That was mm-hmm. the that was the highest price single act of socialism this country's ever seen. Yeah, that's so, a great and, point. And I mean, so uh, thank you. So, but I mean, I, I'm a conservative, but I look at I I don't just go by you know what's black or white. I mean, I actually look at the at everyone and judge them for what they are. And I agree. I think we need to give Barack Obama a chance. And you know what? I mean, this all started with Bush going you know spending all this money. And, you know, somebody's got to get us out of it, and hopefully Barack will do that. Well, listen, these are great points, Michael, and uh, I, okay. I take it as a high compliment that uh, you're, you're, you're somebody who, uh, you know, who, who spends time on, on uh, both sides of the political equation, but you choose to spend some time with me. So I, yeah. I appreciate that, and uh, call in any time, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. Good call. Right. Thanks, Michael. Okay, bye. Sounds like uh, Michael's on his way into the house. We were just talking about a lot of uh, torture, Turley. Yeah. If he logs on to richardhuntershow.com right now, then coming up next he can see some people who voluntarily torture themselves and each other. That's true, yeah. That's right. We've Are they going to do that out here? Well, uh, you know, there, there's, there's always health issues. Oh, I know we're true, serving yeah. crawfish, so yeah. I'm not sure... Uh, we'll probably have to check with the health department. But Torture we'll, and dancing. We'll do whatever. Yeah. We'll do whatever will uh, be allowed. This will not be our first rodeo with uh, trying to get clearance to suspend someone from a rafter. So I don't <laughs> know, maybe, yes. maybe it can be done. I don't know. What I'm talking about, of course, is uh, we have the lizard man out here. He's up from Austin. Where's he is here, by the way? Performing at the men's club, I-35 and Northwest Highway. He's performing tonight for our friend Alan Faulkner's 40th birthday party. And I tell you what, it's at the Lizard Lounge, and even the, you don't have to know. The great part is you don't have to know Alan to go. Oh, like wow. a lot of birthday parties, you could just show up at somebody's house, even if you heard they had the Lizard Man, and be like, what's up? You so, know? so if somebody has a unique character at their birthday party, 
and we have them on the show, then we basically can promote their show for them. I think that's the way the law is written. Yeah, okay, uh, great. <laughs> well, that's at Lizard Lounge uh, tonight, and uh, we're at uh, Ross and Good Latimer, so we're going to be talking to him about that, and we're going to have him on the webcam. So you can see, it, this is a guy who, was, who turned himself into a lizard. The it's metamorphosis, I don't think, is, is exactly complete, but he's well on his way. So uh, we'll have him on the webcam at richardhuntershow.com, and you can uh, you can see that. And we're going to get into all that next. We still have Katie Darrell of uh, TMZ.com yet to come. And uh, what else? And you can... Hard drive. And the hard drive, the political yeah. hard drive we have to get to as well. Yes, thank you. So all of that uh, still to come in the second hour of the show. In the meantime, uh, Twitter us out here at Poolside. You can follow us on Twitter at uh, twitter.com forward slash... Hunter show. All right. Uh, we need to hear some uh, headlines. We need to hear some traffic from Jaron and the Anvil Nyhart and the uh, Eye in the Sky. And then uh, then here come the freaks. We'll get to all that next poolside as uh, the Richard Hunter show continues. Uh, afternoons 4 to 6 and out here poolside at the Men's Club Northwest Highway I-35. Come out and join us. More next on 1360 AM. Call the Richard Hunter Show toll-free nationwide at 1-800-277-1600. You're listening to Rational Radio, the blowtorch of truth in North Texas, KMNY, Hearst, Dallas, Fort Worth. Hey, Sean. Hey. Okay, uh, I'm wondering if I push from the Comrex box, uh, that's going to make a difference for us to be louder out here or no? Do what now? For the, uh, for the, head, for the uh, speaker to be louder out here yeah is i mean it's coming from the board correct that speaker no the speaker's coming from the comrex okay is there a button on the uh, comrex that can turn the volume up from that pushing to us because it may be that that may be the reason the yellow one which is a return okay try turning that up and see if i get louder over that speaker all right, hold on. Test one, two, one, two, three, four. See if I'm getting louder. Yes, Hello. Yes, yes, you were. Okay, then there you go. Now, is that going to make us louder here too? It should. Okay. I think. I don't know. Hold on. Don't say anything. We'll try something. Hold on. Check, check. Check, 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 check. One, two, 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 one, two. No, that doesn't make a difference. Hey, Sean? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, that doesn't make a difference. Well, then it's not going to. It shouldn't because the board is not going to the amplifier. Huh. But uh, are you not coming across at all? I mean, it's so low, but everything else is so loud. Like, everything from you guys is great. Okay. I'm just, I mean, it's not a big deal for on air, but it's just for here for people to listen to, you know? Well, what I could do is I can retrofit that thing, and I could put uh, one channel will be from the studio, and the other channel will be from the, um, will be from the board. And I'll split uh, another, see, I'm only running one channel to the Comrex. Oh, okay. I can run the other channel to the amplifier. You'll have one of the knob. The knob on the right will control the volume of you there at yeah. the at the at the thing, and then the volume. The other one would control the volume coming back from the studio. I'll set that up next week. Okay, cool. Thanks. Hey, uh, yeah, Charlie. And amongst all that chaos with the noise, did you happen to push any buttons or change any knobs or anything over there? No, I just turned down the speaker out here uh -huh. because it was so loud. I mean, it was, you know. That was it? Yeah. I just kept, every time that I heard uh, heard that squeal, I just turned it down on here. Okay. That's all we wanted to know. Okay. Hello, Internet. Two minutes. We bumped that, that's what happened. Oh. Two lanes still blocked. Two lanes.
I've 25. One minute. How long? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You're going the wrong way! Two lanes still blocked off westbound 183 at County Line Road due to an accident, and westbound 20 at Cedar Ridge disabled vehicle off to the right shoulder, slowing things down there. I'm Jaron Nyhart. Your next traffic update is at 525. And coming up next on your main microphone, the man himself, the man you spent last night talking about. Here comes Richard Hunter. Richard Hunter to the main stage. Richard Hunter. Turley checks out. Turley. All right, we are back live from the men's club, I-35 and Northwest Highway, broadcasting as we do every Friday poolside, even when it's a little cloudy. Now, sometimes, most of the time, the sun is shining bright, and uh, the pool is packed with uh, bikini-clad or less uh, women and uh, fully clothed men, which is the way we like it. But uh, even today, as it is, uh, oh, yeah, we're panning out for the wide shot. Nice job there, Charlie. If you're logged on to richardhuntershow.com, you're seeing some excellent streaming video. Even as it is uh, a little overcast uh, today, we're still out here poolside. The all-you-can-eat crawfish uh, boil is still in effect, so come on out and join us. We'll be broadcasting live until 6, and uh, crawfish boil goes on until 7. Now, if there has ever been a time to log on to richardhuntershow.com in the short life of our streaming video feature, it is now. Because uh, I am joined uh, by, uh, let me say uh, hello first to my left, ladies first, uh, by Courtney Crave. Courtney, welcome. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having us out here. I'm happy to have you out here. And then uh, to my right is the Lizard Man. Hey, man, how, how are, you, are you? I'm doing good. Good, good. Now, uh, Courtney and the Lizard Man and uh, some, of their, uh, some of their other friends uh, who are, by the way, uh, 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 Hova. Who is uh, also Who's in there? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Good. Uh, he is uh, known professionally as the headmaster. Is here. He's traveled all the way from Norway. Now, uh, why why are these people here? They're all here for my friend Alan Faulkner's uh, 40th birthday party. Which, by the way, Alan, I'm I'm closing in on you. I'm going to be there. It's not going to be too long. And you are setting a real standard here for 40th birthday parties. I, I think I'm going to I'm gonna take my wife over there tonight just because I want her to see the way a 40th birthday party should be done. She's going to have about a year and a half Man, to plan this thing. You're putting pressure on her. Yeah, well, that's what this marriage is about. Gosh. Me putting pressure on her. Uh, because Alan, who... Uh, Alan, who uh, has, as long as I've known him, has been in uh, tattooing. And you know what? In fact, let's do this. Let's, uh, if you could pass that mic over to Alan. Can we get that hot, Turley? That mic over there? Check, check. All right. There we go. Very good, yeah. Uh, now, uh, Alan, as long as I've known him, has been in uh, tattooing and piercing. And now you know that, that you've been in the business and you're getting old when you've been around long enough to start removing the tattoos on people. you ta Well, probably not the ones you tattoo because that's good work. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, he, he's always been in the business, and he's always had uh, interesting characters around him, and that's what we have in common. Now, 
Alan's birthday party is at the church tonight, and this is uh, open to the public. $5 admission, 21 and over. $10 admission, 21 and under. The uh, church at, uh, what is that, Ross and Good Latimer, I guess. Is that right? The Swiss. That's what it is. Thank you, Courtney. Swiss and uh, Good Latimer. Now, the Lizard Man is going to be performing, and once again, you, you can you can see me talk to the Lizard Man at RichardHunterShow.com. You really should log on uh, for this. Many people, Lizard Man, though, are going to have known you from uh, many appearances on like things like Discovery Channel, stuff right, like that, right? Yeah. Ripley's Believe It or Not is the one that a lot of people still yeah. identify with. But, yeah, I've done documentaries for Discovery, TLC, uh, done spots on MTV. Uh, people have come out to shows have played Dallas here with a lot of great bands with the Jägermeister Music Tour. I've been here with uh, Slayer, Slipknot. A lot of good, uh, lot of good times up here. Um, the thing is, though, they should come down and see the show because if you've seen the TV shows, you might know what I look like. But TV is highly edited; you can't do my show on TV, so they get an uncensored look at what I'm actually like, which, quite frankly, will cause some of them to hate me. But that's just as good as applause. Yeah. Well, it's a great point. If they go to your MySpace page, there is a, a, a video, a highlight reel of uh, of your stage show and you know that's that's true i mean it's like uh we had uh, uh we had a uh impressionist comedian friend of ours on a couple of weeks ago craig gas and i was telling him guys i said you know there is pressure you do know craig okay yeah i've actually uh craig came out i met him at a uh, stone sour show when i was on tour he's really good friends one of my old tour managers we hung out for a while when uh, did a couple of small New York comedy clubs with him after our show in New York. Well, tell me if this analogy fits you then, because, you know, I said to Craig, I said, you know, you've got double the pressure of the average stand-up comedian because you have to have impersonations down, but then whatever the fake character is saying has to be funny. So so you got to be the lizard man, but then just beyond being the lizard, now you got to have a stage act, right? With an, impre- with an impression that some people will try and get off on just the technical expert. He's like, oh, he really sounds like him. But a good impressionist comes up with an imaginative situation. Like, you know, if Craig's going to do Christopher Walken, he has to come up with this amazing situation and story for Christopher Walken to be in to truly be an entertainer. Otherwise, he's just a mimic. Now, for me, the cool thing is that who I am off stage and on stage, basically, the difference is on stage I'm amplified. But, yeah, I've, I'm the lizard man, but now I've got to pick out what's interesting about being the lizard man to other people. Otherwise, I'm just me sitting around on stage. Right, yeah. right. All right, and, and, and for those who haven't seen the story and don't know the background, I mean, it's it's quite simply put, you're, you're in the, I guess, continual process, one of these days it'll be done, of completely transforming yourself into a human lizard. Right. I, I picked a reptilian theme for a transformation, but years and years ago I decided I was going to do my whole body and do it permanently. So we're talking about like 700 hours of tattooing so far, sharpened teeth, uh, horn ridge implants over my eyes, and, of course, the the split tongue. Um, I actually get tattooed here in Dallas by a buddy of mine, Mike Tidwell at Obscurities, and uh, I'm hoping because Mike works pretty fast, maybe another 100, 200 hours I'll be able to sort of lock out the tattooing, barring touch-ups, that sort of thing. What what, what percent, and we're talking about a, a solid solid green as a lizard would be, what, uh, what percentage of your body do you think right now has been completely tattooed lizard green with the scales and everything? Uh, right now in terms of outline, basically all of my body that I'm going to do. So you know, not the palms, palms of my hands or the soles of my feet, but otherwise pretty much covered in the outline. As far as filling in the green, I'm like a big coloring book now. Probably about 60%, 65% filled in, just taking a guess. All right. So did you start with, when you started doing it, did you start with areas where you thought, you know, maybe if I don't stick with this 10, 15 years down the line, if I'm just doing a kneecap right now, we can abandon. Was there a part of the body where you're like, okay, you know what, point of no return right here? Well, I think the the point of no return was probably, um, you know, in terms of the tattooing, was when I did my arm. So we went elbows to fingertips in one session for each arm on the outlining. And when I did that, that was sort of the symbolic of it. Long before that, I decided I was going to go all the way. But my very first tattoo was on my back and on my shoulder because it's one thing to say you're going to transform your whole body, get it completely tattooed. It's another thing to do it. So I didn't know. I, you know, I might have been a giant pansy without realizing it. So I had to get a tattoo that would let me know whether or not I was going to be able to take the whole way or not. So we did that, and I figured even if I didn't go further, what would happen was I would just have a cool story about the tattoo I never Oh, finished. I don't know. I disagree. I think it was when you got the eyebrow ridges. Yes, yes. Alan, he, he, yes. Sh- he showed Those up so with intense. his uh, eyebrow ridges, and he hadn't had his face tattooed yet. 
So uh, it was a big step. He showed up, no eyebrows, huge bumps, and I was like, well, I guess you are going to become the lizard man, huh? Yeah, okay, now let's, expl let, let's explain the eyebrow ridges. Now, again, streaming at richardhuntershow.com, you can watch as he's taking the sunglasses off now. Wow, you can just see the hits going up exponentially as uh, the, the, eye the uh, sunglasses have come off. Now, what you've got here is underneath where your eyebrows are or were, what have you, there are there there are ridges there there are implants they're like little uh, like like, uh, uh, like ball bearings they look like they actually look a lot like the tips of bullets if you think about it like okay. a bullet tip because it's a rounded cone and there's five of them they get gradually larger as you go from the inside to the outside five pieces of Teflon over each eye and it's easily the most painful thing I've ever endured in my life I mean I've been hit by cars I've been electrocuted I fall on rock climbing. That's just on stage. Yeah, and yeah, no, <laughs> no pain that I've ever gone through, voluntary or involuntary, compares to this. It was really like getting cracked in the skull with a baseball bat. And I mean, I had, I'd been hit, and I got into a, a hockey fight when I was about 17, had my forehead busted open with a hockey stick, and that pain went away quicker than the implant pain. Right, well, Do you minute, still get minute, any pain? Hold on, hold on a minute. You play hockey. How have you not been uh, given a lifetime contract to some minor league hockey team? Isn't there like the Saskatchewan Lizards or something? How has somebody uh, not contacted yeah, you? I, I suck even too bad for oh, them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and this when I was 17. It was about the last time. I, and it was floor hockey, too, because I can't skate oh, to save my life. Okay. But with the, with the, the, the concept of the implant and the ridges, now I, I, I have a friend who uh, you know, we all know a guy who has a, uh, like an implant under a tattoo. He did like a silicone thing. And I remember when I asked him about that, I said, well, my gosh, where did you find a licensed physician that would do such a thing? And he said, oh, no, a buddy did it. Now, is that is, do we attribute a buddy to the eyebrow ridges? Um, probably the same buddy in all likelihood. It's actually uh, the guy that did it has worked um, in biomedical engineering and devices for a long time. So a very qualified professional, just not licensed for surgery by any state or medical board. Steve is actually in town this weekend yeah, as well. he's in town. That's right. He just goes by Steve. I see. Yeah. He goes by Steve Hayworth, and oh, he's okay. very public about it. He's oh, okay. shy about it all. No, he's not shy about it at all. For all your eyebrow ridge implant needs, I tell now, you what, it, it wouldn't be it, it's it wouldn't be the worst implant job I've ever seen. That's for sure. Yeah, now, I'm noticing. Is your tongue split too? Yeah. Oh, no, well, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm neglecting the tongue, which Girls I've must been love accused that, huh? of before. You're uh, you you have a forked tongue where the two. Uh, points of the split tongue operate independently of each other, right? Right, and for most people who get their tongue split, eventually that will build that will build up. I have sort of an advantage. I was one of the uh, the first three ever done. It's been about 12 years since I got my split, so I've had more practice with it than a lot of people. But once it heals, if you work with it, you can generally control a split tongue independently. You definitely have separate sensation. Them. When you first get it, it's like sensory overload. It's like you're constantly mouth kissing someone else, but it's yourself. What, what is practicing? Here we what go, Richard. It doesn't sound half bad. I've got an interesting statistic for you. If yeah. you come out to the venue tonight, I'm willing to guess at least 100 people have a split tongue there. At least. Really? It'll probably be, it's, it, tonight would be probably a good contender for the largest gathering of people with split tongues ever. Well, it does seem like there needs to be some sort of Facebook group or something, right? Well, you and I are the only people on this couch that don't have split tongues. Who would have thought that? Wow. Now let's okay. Let's uh, let's talk to some of the other people who who do. Uh, now all the way from Norway because there is an international flavor to this. Uh, yeah, come, come on over here, Hova. Uh, uh, all the way from Norway, this uh, gathering tonight at Lizard Lounge, my friend Alan's uh, 40th birthday party, has a real uh, international flair to it. Now Hova, who uh, is known on stage uh, as the headmaster. Uh, from Pain Solution at PainSolution.net is uh, is the website. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome. How are you? I'm feeling good. Great. Great. You know, I've been to your country. I've been to Norway. Yes. That was uh, uh, back before I was failing at a radio career. I was in a bluegrass band, and that type of like uh, music was always really popular. Nor Norway was like our our hot our sweet spot. You know, like like Norway and and Denmark and, and that area. All those countries in the Netherlands are like, like you guys can drive from Norway to Denmark about as fast as I can go from Fort Worth to Dallas, right? That's right. Yeah, it's a small country. Now, now the, the uh, name kind of says it all here, painsolution.net. I, uh, uh, I get a feeling this is probably a, a pretty extreme performance. Give me, give me a little bit of an idea about your brand of performance art. 
Well, I, uh, I basically work with the, the classical sideshow material, like the human blockhead. I do some weightlifting of my piercings. I do uh, battle nails, battle blades, some fire eating. You know, I put fire to my hair. Yeah, is that what happened to it? Your hair. I do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's constantly. I'd save on haircuts. You just burn it off every every few weeks, probably, right? That's one of the advantages in this line of business. You know, I, I'll just burn the hair off. So. All right. Now, I I notice uh, an interesting physical uh, characteristic about you, Hova, that uh, people can see on our RichardHunterShow.com uh, web stream, and that's that your your forehead. Now, I used to work in the pro wrestling business. And uh, I'm used to being around guys who have uh, affected, scarred foreheads, but that's normally from cutting themselves so that they can dramatically bleed. Is that after years of showmanship? What what particular discipline has affected your forehead? That's uh, that would be the human concussion. Uh, I stick needles through my forehead, and eventually, over time, the, these ridges are building up uh, as the scar tissue is building up more and more. Okay. Now, you know, to sort of bring it back to a political perspective, I would guess that there are problems in certain areas of uh, our United States in putting on shows. What is it like in Norway? Has is it, is it been kind of a tough road to hoe in terms of, uh, you know, venues give you a hard time about shows or no? No, in Norway we're pretty much easygoing. I could do pretty much anything I want on stages in Norway, never any problems. So um, yeah, I guess it's a bit harder here in the States, the land of the free. You know, oh, you yes, can't yes. you can't really do nudity on stage. Right. There's uh, you know, fire is sometimes difficult. Right. Um, yeah, no yeah. suspensions also. You know, I guess in some states you can't do them publicly here. Now, Alan, you're behind this whole thing. You'll undoubtedly be arrested before the evening's over, right? What was that? I said you'll undoubtedly be arrested before the evening's over, well, right? You're putting this whole thing not. on. I've oh, got okay. a whole weekend of activities to do. Oh, oh. birthday was a big envelope with, for bail. Oh, it. yeah. Good call. Well, permissiveness does run rampant at the Lizard Lounge. Now, uh, our, our, uh, our, our female uh, persuasion here, uh, Courtney Crave, is uh, working on the show as well because we, we this is not all of the featured entertainment here, Courtney. Tell me about well, first of all, who's this? Uh, who is this young lady that's hanging from her knees here? What's going on there on the the flyer? All right, so the really hot redhead on the flyer is my very good friend Crash, and she is. She is actually known as like the suspension queen. Like she does amazing, amazing suspension things. And she's just a badass chick. So she's going to be coming out. You can see her hanging from her knees. You can see us do all sorts of other crazy shit to her. Whoa, and whoa, whoa! Hold on, hold on. We got to catch that. All right. Now see, I was presenting. I was presenting this this incredibly uh, family-friendly show that Alan was putting on tonight. Right up until that point. And then you just blew the gag. Manson family friendly. Yes, yes. If you, if you. Family friendly, friendly things to her. All right, Alan. Quick question while we let the delay build up and Courtney composes herself. Hot, <laughs> She's hot, a wild girl. Hottest female Manson family member go. Hottest female Manson family member. It's got to be Shirley Manson. No, 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 Alan. No, I'm talking about Charles Manson. The uh, the cult leader. Let me tell you my quick thought. I'm well aware of who you're talking about. All right, all right. Let me let me tell you my quick thought. Uh, for a long time, I thought that could possibly be Susan Atkins, but mainly because of the promo shot, the one that ran in Life magazine, the way that the shadow was cast over her face. But as the years have, the years have not been kind to her, I'll tell you who I think has held up the best is that Leslie Van Houten. Not bad. All right. Back to uh, Courtney. So you you were saying uh, I don't want to cut you off there. I, I'm sorry, it's my Tourette's. Um, so so Tracy's going to be doing a fantastic show. I'm going to be helping her out with it. Um, she'll be hanging from her knees. She'll be hanging from her back. And, and like she's flying in and like a trooper, she's getting the hooks put in her and she's coming straight out to the venue. And um, it's going to be really really awesome. She's when she says getting the hooks put in her, she's not speaking euphemistically. These are these are actual. When you run with this crowd, you're talking about actual hooks. I've learned that from uh, being around Alan. You know, over at our old place. We hitched a guy up to his pickup truck with hooks in his back, and then he towed us around the block. Remember that, Alan? That was a lot oh, of fun. Oh, I remember it. That was you fun. Could, yeah. You can still see it on uh, if you go to richardhuntershow.com. The, on the YouTube channel, you sure can. That thing is very popular uh, on uh, on YouTube. All right, well, listen, let's do this. I've got, uh, I'm not even uh, done yet because i got Hansel von Quinzer over here in the wings. He's going to present the social calendar, of which uh, Alan's birthday party is going to be a component. Once again, it's at uh, Lizard Lounge tonight, which is Swiss and Good Latimer. You can go to uh, 
lizardlounge.com for uh, details or the churchdallas.com. That will work as well. Lizard Man Performing, Pain Solution, Courtney Crave, and, uh, and Crash, yes, uh, all at the Lizard Lounge tonight. So go find Alan. Wish him a- I guarantee you this will be the most uh, entertaining 40th birthday party you go to all year. You know the guy that's turning 40 in your office that's just prematurely old? That's not Alan. All right, this is going to be a fun birthday party. So go over there tonight and uh, uh, wish him happy birthday. Guys, uh, we'll look forward to the show tonight. I want to thank everybody for coming out. And enjoy Poolside. You guys have garnered quite a crowd here, so there's probably going to be some people with some questions. So uh, let me let me let you guys uh, do that. All right, cool. And when we come back, we're going to present our uh, social calendar by uh, Dallas's official town crier. A lot of people didn't know we had one. Uh, Hansel von Quinzer is going to be out here. We've got to get to that. Courtney, uh, or uh, uh, Katie Darrell, sorry, from TMZ. We still have to get to her as well. Somehow, all before the clock strikes uh, six, as we continue to broadcast live from the men's club, I-35 and Northwest Highway. Come on out and join us more next on 1360 AM. See the sights that go with the sounds of the Richard Hunter Show by logging on to richardhuntershow.com. The United check, States check. Constitution starts with the three most powerful words in the English Hello. Language. We the people. For far too long, yeah, I'm here. the okay. voices of progress right. and change ready with have HMS. not been heard in our country. Okay. For a short while, the thoughts and ideas of As am I. was given voice on the airwaves of Dallas and Fort Worth. Lizard Man is then, quite intense. He looks like it. Changed. 30 seconds. Those voices left the airwaves. It's, it's the return quite of cool. some of those voices it, has begun. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but hey. On the air in the Dallas hey, I wouldn't do that S either, dude. Junior dialed that's just that's nutty. <laughs> rational radio. It's commitment. It's that's what that is. True. And I dig somebody that's committed, so. Radio. Yeah, right on. 13, 6, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Why make the landlord richer? Put us to the test. Get out of the red race. Call HMS. Time now to talk to my good friend Bob Lavelle from HMS Home Marketing Services, the man who gets wayward renters out of the rent race and by uh, hooking them up with homes of their own. Find him on the World Wide Web at blessyourheart.com or reach him by phone at 972-392-9595. Bob, I, let's say I am a wayward renter and I give you a call at 972-392-9595. What's our next step? Well, that's, that's kind of like acting for me because I know that you actually do own uh, yes. But I'm, I'm going to try to, okay, I'm going to find my motivation here. Mm-hmm. I hate landlords. Mm-hmm. I think you can lose 200 pounds of ugly fat by firing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, quit letting them take your money and uh, call HMS, and what we will do is tell you exactly where you stand on qualifying. Good, bad, or ugly, you have to know where you stand. Once you find out that you can qualify, we'll tell you for how much and uh, lay everything out in writing for you. And God forbid you say, you know, you don't qualify. Uh, we're going to tell you why. Give it to you in writing, and then more importantly, we're going to tell you what you need to do to get it fixed. Once you do that, we are going to help you find the right house, beat up the builders, or find you a pre-owned. Then we're going to get you the right mortgage, and sometimes you need a few help, uh, helping hands with bumps and bruises on credit. We do it all under one roof. All you have to do is make the phone call, 972-392-9595. That's 972-392-9595, or email Bob directly. At the email address is bob at blessyourheart.com. Bob, thanks. We'll talk to you later. Why make the landlord richer? Put us to the test. Get out of the red race. Call H. Are you in need of an IRS tax bailout? Do you owe ten thousand dollars or more F and in teamwork. back taxes? You need aggressive representation. Yeah, that is right. That is F and teamwork. Enrolled in or tax professionals teamwork. that specialize in tax liens, <laughs> back taxes, tax. Hey, you guys realize that on the stream, everything that we say during the breaks goes across the web. That's why we're not saying anything. We how to negotiate with them? Damning, you know. But I was going to. I was going to say. I was going to say. Find me a nice set of headlights for when I get there. Yeah, we'll that out here. That's. 
bomb didn't go over the air, did it? Well, it'll go on the stream, but... Yeah, but it didn't. I hit the dump as soon as I heard it. Well, then it didn't go over the air. As soon as you hear it and hit the dump, it's fine, because it's like 12 second delay. So. It's just going to go over the air on the stream, which, you know, It's the internet. The internet's... Said, yes. Yeah, you're right. Although we can't put any nudity on the youth stream. Otherwise, we'd have uh, girls from the men's club all, all around here. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Are you doing traffic again? Oh, well, yeah, let me do that. I bet you just want your money back. We have an accident. Saturday at 3 p.m. to American Success Stories, and I'll show you how. I'll be sharing my insights about people. We have an accident in Northbound 7545. Extraordinary success. My name is Suzanne Smith, author and commentator, and I'll be hosting the American Success Stories each Saturday at 3 p.m. Done. There is strength in unity at the 2009 African Did you get my AM about Dell? Uh, I did, but man, I, I, I didn't see. It was saying something about there's somebody in town named Dell or. Yeah, that was me. I'm, I'm the only one doing the IMs today. Okay, what was it, what was it about? Dell, the Deltron's going to be at the Granada tonight. Who? Say it again? Deltron. Dell, the funky Homo sapien. I'm not familiar with him. No, my mistake. We have one minute. One minute, Dave. an interactive workshop for children, African arts and crafts, and cultural books. May 8th and 9th. Hey, have the Hansel's music ready. Uh, when Dick introduces him, just start playing it and just kind of have it underneath him and stuff. Okay. I got it. African Games for Adult and Children. For more information, dfwinternational.org or 972-661-2764. Rational Radio wants you. Rational Radio is looking for a few good salespeople. If you're a self-motivated individual who can develop new advertising clients for Dallas, Fort Worth's own time, you got uh, your programming. We want to talk with you. Contact our sales. Fifteen. One four nine five one eighty six hundred. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, one, go. You're going the wrong way! We have an accident northbound 75 at Bryan Street with two lanes blocked off and delays the eastbound I-20 at School Road. I'm not sure why. I guess it could be anything. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I'm Jaron Nyhart. Your next traffic update is at 545. That's right. Pull him aside. Talk to that man. See if I get some a**ing you laps and in your face. It's Richard Hunter. <laughs> oh, wow. You can tell it's Friday. The strip club DJ is man. out of control. He is out of control. As is kind of the whole show. You know, here's something I've noticed. Three weeks into this uh, standing gig, we have poolside at the men's club on Fridays, which is where we're broadcasting live from right now, I-35 and Northwest Highway. You know what happens, Turley? The the crawfish boil, the all you can eat crawfish boil is four to seven. Four o'clock we're on four to six. The four o'clock hour, I can more or less maintain order on the show. There there's not as many people out poolside, you know, everybody's kinda getting rolling. And then comes the five o'clock hour and things just get crazy. Well and people are getting off work, so they were yeah. like, you know what, I'm gonna come to the men's club. People are getting <laughs> off work. The ladies start showing up poolside, and today that was freak hour, yeah. and we're only halfway through it. I, I had uh, I didn't have enough couch for all the freaks I had. That's great. We had uh, we, we, we you had, looked normal. We had, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did. Yeah, people streaming at uh, RichardHunterShow.com probably thought the same thing. Now let me let me bring into the camera shot. Speaking of our website video stream. Hansel von Quinzer. Uh, I believe Hansel, of course, is always accompanied by uh, fantastic theme music we're enjoying here. I believe that's a, a handle piece. Uh, celebration for Royal Fireworks. This is the part where I act like Alex Trebek, like I knew what it was and I didn't have to be told. Let me give the uh, microphone to Hansel here. Hansel, how you doing, man? Good to see you again. Let's get, uh, let's get Hansel's mic hot here. How you doing, man? Excellent, yes. It was quite a drive up here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's because you roll in the horse-drawn carriage. I mean, any place, it's like a two-day lead time. Well, there was no mud on the uh, expressway, <laughs> at least, yes. 
Soon. Now, now Hansel, uh, for those who, who have never seen him before, once again, I, I know I'm directing you a lot to the webcam today, but, boy, today's the day to be on it at richardhuntershow.com. You can see Hansel. Now, Hansel uh, is... I would say the most eccentric associate of the show, and that is saying something. Yeah. Hansel, uh, every day of his life, head to toe, is dressed in the uh, colonial regalia. It's either uh, like a Thomas Jefferson outfit, or uh, here lately you've been uh, rocking the top hat and the, uh, the Martin Van Buren mustache, which is real, by the way, uh, and uh, just some incredibly elaborate tailor-made clothing. And, uh, I mean, this has been as long as I've, I've known you five years, longer, something like that. I mean, this is, uh, you're stuck at, you're, you're like, Bill and Ted, when, when the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure franchise ended, you just kept going. You just kept going, right? Yeah, you, you, you never want to close the envelope. You just keep going as far as you can. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I can't detect abnormal behavior amongst my own kind. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now uh, you uh, you made a move. Uh, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, to become Dallas's official town crier. That was something you wanted to do, right? Mm, that's correct. Yes. Yeah, you would uh, you would go down to the town square and uh, ha- hold a scroll and read the the day's news, right? Then nail the scroll to the post. Yes. Now I tried to, as a friend. I tried to provide counsel and tell you that the reason they used to have town criers is because uh, almost everyone was illiterate, and now there's still a lot of illiterate people, but not quite as, as many. Do you think that, that at all thwarted your attempt to become Dallas's town crier? Uh, no, I mean, people still want to see the pomp and ceremony. I think in this world today we have so, so many people that have gone casual that mm-hmm. we need to bring back some sort of entertainment value to the everyday lifestyle well you are that and i would take you over katie couric any night of the week if you were reading the news to me now we're going to try something new with hansel uh we haven't done this before we've always incorporated him in the show in, in various aspects but what i thought we would do is uh uh we have uh, positioned hansel as the show's social director now we were just talking with uh with uh, the crew that's going to be over at uh the lizard lounge tonight and what I thought we would do is have you put together town crier style a little, uh, you know, a list of uh, the weekend's events that our listeners might want to head out to. All, All right. right. Well, that will work. All We're right. going to have uh, Dustin hold the microphone for him here. Okay, so. Dustin is going to hold the microphone for you. All right, so you can uh, hold your scroll up there. All right. All right. Oh, God, he's going to ring that bell. It's ready? right next to my ear. Whenever you're ready, Hansel. All right, let me all right, all right. let me just get the door shut in there. I don't want to scare the yeah, scare ahead, the yeah. dancers. Uh, uh, all right, all right. So stay on camera here so everybody can uh, enjoy. All right, let him have it. Oh yay! Oh yay! In this month's installment of From the Scroll with Hansel von Quinza, we have five events which I'll be reading. Uh, first, we had uh, Alan Faulkner's 40th birthday party. He was here yeah. earlier. Yeah. Did they go over the prices and the location of the church? Well, you covered all right. that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I guess I can sort of gloss over sure. that because we've cut, you've covered that. they got their own segment, absolutely. Okay. We need to know the other events that are going on Excellent. around the Metroplex this week. All right. We also have the, the Scarborough Fair that's uh, in Waxahachie. That's been going on for almost 30 years. Oh, uh, yeah. Renaiss- you know, Renaissance Fair people, kind of weird. Well, you know, I mean, some people, it's a lifestyle. There are folks that will travel from uh, state to state, and that's what they do. That is their living. Mm-hmm. Is uh, That's how they earn their keep, is actually traveling around. And uh, they sell goods and services, not unlike uh, certain gypsies did back in the day. Mm, that's so, probably a good place to get, like, a turkey leg. Uh, yeah, if you <laughs> can handle the grease. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not one for uh, triglycerides. Now, yeah, so. now, now, I've been out there, and uh, because I heard they had mud wrestling, but uh, much to my dismay, it turned out to be all dudes. Uh, there, there were some dudes. There were also some uh, buxom young lasses out there. Oh, well, I well, guess yeah. I was there on the wrong day. <laughs> right. All right, well, maybe I'll go this year. And then if you're the drinking type, I know that you're not. No. But they do have taverns, and you can get mead, which is actually a kind of uh, wine that's distilled from honey. Mead. It's sweet. It's all, it tastes they like made a spiral notebook. There's not many places. <laughs> no. <laughs> there, there's not many places that sell mead. Uh, uh-huh. So they they carry that, and I think it runs uh, uh, two and a half pounds or five U.S. dollars. All right. So okay. Yeah, we well, could do that. Now that's going economical. on through the uh, 25th of May, mm-hmm. and they'll also be opened uh, for Memorial Day. If you're interested in going, you can go to scarboroughrenfest.com, uh, and it's $21.99 per person. 
All right. All right. Twenty-one dollars and ninety-nine cents. All right. It's about thirty minutes south of Dallas. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. Next, Next up, the uh, our social director and town crier Hansel von Quinzer, going over uh, various social events this weekend. Right now on Sunday, we also have uh, the uh, act Voltaire playing at the church, which is where Alan Faulkner's 40th birthday is tonight. Right. So you could go to that. Now, he's sort of like an acoustic steampunk guy, similar to Roger Miller if he was a cynical uh, person into goth. He has a gypsy and pirate co uh, quartet called the Skeletal Orchestra. Roger Miller, the uh, do wack a doo guy? Yeah, the do wack a doo you know, King Dang of the me? Road. Right, dang King me. King of the Road? That's correct, yeah. Ruby, don't take your love to tell? No, that was Kenny Rogers, actually. No, at first yeah. it, was, it was Roger Miller. Roger Miller did Ruby Don't Take Your Love to Tell. Originally. I, I, I would not, you of all people, I would not have expected to know that. Well, but, uh, you're, you're uh, uh, coming from the sort of Kiss generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wasn't well, it just three weeks ago we were singing Kiss, uh, Christine 16? Yes, and we God were. of Thunder? But I'm very, I'm very uh, multifaceted when it right. comes to music. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, so if you're interested in going to see the uh, Voltaire show, he's sort of a comedy uh, magician, so it's not like your normal band. Mm. Uh, he'll be uh, this Sunday at the Lizard Lounge. Doors open at 8. If you want to see the show, you have to be there by 9. It's $15 for admission. All right. All right. Uh, uh, in other news, uh, the Texas Burlesque Festival will be oh, going on. Oh, burlesque. I'm always a big fan of burlesque. Now, you just went to a couple of burlesque events. I uh, did. We, uh, had a, we had an official presence out at the uh, Spring Swing Fling, I think it was called at uh, the Lakewood Theater, and that was a show. fantastic show that oh, was yes. put on. Yeah, didn't you enjoy that, Charlie? Yes, me and my wife enjoyed it. There was a real, real attention to authenticity yes. and detail out there. And that scene, you know, I, it's, it's blowing up nationwide, but I hear that Dallas in particular has a, has a good uh, uh, burlesque revival scene. Uh, they really do. It sort mm. of brings back the whole Jack Ruby era and... Uh, even even before that, I mean, burlesque sort of spawned out of vaudeville. Yeah. So you you have that and now uh, now, now for your tastes, uh, Hansel von Quinzer, would you prefer? I mean, these these ladies are taking us back as early as uh, toward the the beginning to the middle of uh, the the 20th century. But would you prefer they go even a little further back and sort of embody that look that says that at any moment they might have their throat cut by Jack the Ripper? I do pre prefer my butt with a little lace, actually. <laughs> That's how I take it. Yeah. So, uh, so the burlesque festival. That, that, yes, exactly. There. So if you en if you enjoy uh, women dancing around scantily clad and uh, period costume, this will probably Check. be more mid-century mm -hmm. is what you'd be looking at, 40s and 50s, some, in some from the 30s. Uh, you could go to that. Now, that, that will be in Austin. But the same, oh, and, and you could go to Texas Burlesque Fest, if you want to see that, Texas Burlesque Fest. Mm -hmm. uh, that's May 15th and 16th. Uh, and also here in Dallas, that same weekend, we have the Hot Rods and Heels, which will be at Excuses, which was the old, do you remember the Club One on Main yes. Street in Deep Ellum? Yeah. Well, they're now called Excuses, and they have Hot Rods and Heels, which will be there that same weekend, which is the May 15th and 16th. All right. So, Very good. Uh, yeah. Very good. Now, how early would you have to, I mean, May 15th and 16th for the, down in Austin for the Burlesque Festival, you'd pretty much have to leave now in your horse-drawn buggy. It's a, it's a four-day jump. Yeah, so. I'll bet it is. Right. I'll bet it is. Okay, is that going to do it for us? Uh, well, I've got one other event, actually. All right, let's get that and quickly. I, I dug this one up just before coming up here today. All right. Uh, just, this is just in. Uh, May 15th, which is also the same weekend, we have the Zombie Prom. Zombie Prom. If you did not get a chance to go to your prom... When you were in high school. And Take you a like, dead person. And you like zombies. Yeah. Uh, you like the <laughs> Evil Dead movies. Then, uh, what was that, Sam Raimi? Yeah. Then yeah. you're going to want to go to the zombie prom at the church, which is also at the same location as Alan's party. But it won't be this weekend. You know, you've got uh, yeah. three weeks until that. That's May God, 15th. That does sound fun. Now, i got to get a dead date. It, it doesn't there's count so many if jokes there. Moving, you know, so, uh, wow, there's going to be a king and queen. They're going to crown the king and queen. They'll have a balloon drop. Uh, admission to that is uh, ten dollars. And if you want to find out more about Alan's party tonight, or you want to find out about the Voltaire show or the Zombie Prom, you can go to thechurchdallas.com. All right. Well, a fantastic job by yes, Dallas's bravo. town crier and uh, the Richard Hunter Show <laughs> social director Hansel von Quinzer. A good day to you, sir. Thank you. Yes, and uh, I'll uh, let you go uh, around and confuse the girls here at the men's club. Yeah, how does that go over with the girls, you think? Let's find out. Yes. Yeah, let's have him work the room a little bit. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hansel von Quinzer has uh, 
been our guest, our social director, presenting the social calendar. All right, what do I have time for, Turley? Can I get to Katie Darrell from TMZ? We can, yes. Stop now, do that before the show's over with? Possibly, can yes. Can I do we'll, that? We'll make the call here during the break. Boy, all right, all right. We will make a call during the break, and you'll be able to see the call and follow the follow along with the call yes. on the live uh, video stream at richardhuntershow.com, and uh, we'll announce our verdict when we return. Uh, as the Richard Hunter Show continues, it's Friday, so we're broadcasting live poolside as we do at the Men's Club I-35 and Northwest Highway. More next on 1360 AM. Tweet your comments to Richard Hunter on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Hunter Show. Hey, guys. For more than 20 years, J. Peppy's Tex-Mex on Lower Greenville has been serving up more than just great Hello. food. Yeah, how long is Katie? Patio and we'll uh, let me, let me see. 10, 20. 10 minutes, 20 seconds. And we're not going to have 10 minutes, are we, in this segment? I seriously doubt it. I think we'll do the hard drive. Okay. Political. All right. Everybody online, the decision has been made. Hard drive. Well, I'm all alone here inside the studio. Oh, no. In the heart of Irving, the Spirit Grill offers a great menu with a wide variety of food and appetizers, such as spicy buffalo shrimp or fried flag soup. Follow with the Spirit Burger or the Spirit Grill's famous chicken enchilada. Come to the Spirit Grill and enjoy 21 televisions to watch your favorite game or play one of many games that the Spirit Grill offers. Located at 4030 North MacArthur Boulevard, 972-717-7575, or visit spiritgrill.com. Agave Azul Mexican Kitchen you have traffic again? is not your average Tex-Mex. Agave Azul offers fine Mexican cuisine with an authentic decor to match. Kevin and try Agave Azul's handmade corn and flour tortillas or our new veggie quesadillas. When you're done eating, sneak back to Agave Azul's tequila bar featuring over 165 varieties of tequila. Agave Azul Mexican Kitchen and Tequila Bar, 214-390-2165, located at 1114 Elm Street in Carrollton, or check us out on the website. Hey, uh, we're not going to have enough time to do Katie, so... So I think we'll just do hard drive. Mm. Yes. Okay. What time are we coming back? Uh, what? You've got three minutes, yeah. Well, three minutes, 15 seconds after it. Well, I mean, it's it'd be cl- it would be really close. Too close for comfort. Yeah, I mean, I just... Is Sean still there? He's in his uh, office studio. All right, well, it's cool. It doesn't matter. Um, well, shoot. Do you not want to do hard drive? Or? Well, I do. I just hate to waste her. I mean, I, I guess we could still do it on Monday. I'm trying to think what's on there that would not keep. Well, let's see. If, I mean, if you get to it right away, and we're back at 48, correct? Yeah. It's how long? Ten minutes and... Ten, t- ten minutes and 20 seconds. we got to be out by 59. Uh, you got to be out. 30, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to be done by 59.30. I mean, that's hey, Sam, tight. This is MG Gator with you, Gators. Mardi Gras Dallas in the I 35 Stem Homes Towers, two exits north of Victory Park. With Crash Hall Radio. Shuffle service, free and post, American Airlines events. Did I told you about my new smoking patio with giant stage and Gator Park? Uh, you get it. Eastbound 635 at Garland. Smoking patio just in time for Dallas smoking and prohibition. Come smoking party at the new Gators, Mardi Gras Dallas. Call 214 634 9669. $5 day lunches, 11 to 2, sexy dinners, and Gator late night. Party. Two minutes. All right, that's fine. We'll just do hard drive. Dedicated to helping you look your best. A leader in product innovation, offering skin care and color cosmetics did well. for every yeah, woman did. of the world. Our plant and water-based skin care line will give your skin noticeable results in just days. One flawless coverage. Did you get a chance to listen to those Ron Paul cuts or anything foundation. in there? It's kind of no, I'm going to go right to that. Okay. 10 to 20 percent. Face it. For the face you want the world to see. The Parks Mall in Arlington, 817-472-7222. Two Brothers Cigars at 1140. We need to have somebody give a dance but with their top on with Hansel next to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a great idea. Well, Hansel's already posing for photos. Yes. Come enjoy the Diamond Crown Lounge. For our customers, for the discriminating smoker, the big screen. The, bell. the, the, the ladies like the big bell. Yeah. That's because it's very phallic. <laughs> 1114th Street, downtown Plano. On the web at twobrotherscigar.com. <laughs> 
That's twobrotherscigar.com. One minute. Quick Wash America. McKinney and Frisco's premier car wash provides the absolute best value for exterior car wash. Interior cleaning. You want to see somebody tearing a bowl of windshield crawfish in Quick less Wash than America ten minutes? has two convenient locations. Look across the McKinney <laughs> Quick Wash America <laughs> is on the northwest corner of You're not talking about the entire tray of it, are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. we will make short work of it quickly. <laughs> Come get the best service. They got their own technique, eh? Quickwash.com. Yeah. QWI. K-W-A-S-H.com. 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Diana with Diana's Healing Hands Massage Therapy. I attended the National University of Health Sciences in Illinois. I've had the great privilege of taking part in the healing and restoration of many lives. Members of the medical profession have entrusted their patients in my care as we worked as a team to restore injured bodies, sad hearts, and bruised spirits. Give 10, 9, Go to 8, my website, 7, on 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You're going the wrong way! Eastbound 635 at Garland Avenue. We have an accident. One lane in the left shoulder blocked off. And westbound I-20 at Mountain Creek Parkway. Vehicle blocking the right shoulder. I'm Jaron Nyhart for the Richard Hunter Show on Rational Radio. All right, fellas, reach down to your pocket, grab hold of that nice, big, thick wallet. Pull out those bucks, take them out, show them to the man, let him know you want him. And don't forget, the bigger your wallet, the cuter you are to him. We're back to the Richard Hunter Show. We're broadcasting live poolside today, as is our way on Fridays, from the Men's Club I-35 and Northwest Highway. Come on out and join us. The all-you-can-eat crawfish boil rolls on until 7. We're out here each and every Friday. A quick mention of the fact that tomorrow they will be showing the UFC pay-per-view. What are we up to? UFC 97, isn't it? Oh, it's more than 97. 97, 98, something like that. Close to 100. Uh, the item of intrigue tomorrow night is uh, actually there's several. Anderson the Spider Silva putting his uh, middleweight belt on the line against Thales Latis and Chuck the Iceman Liddell returning to action against Mauricio Shogun Hua in the co-main event and uh that cost you like 50 bucks but you come out here at the men's club and uh they're they're going to be showing it all it would uh, cost you is the cover at the door so uh plus you get all the uh all the additional benefits of the entertainment that the men's club has to offer so that'll scenery. be uh tomorrow night right the scenery before we get to the hard drive turley uh let me check the uh twitter page hunter show is our handle twitter.com forward slash hunter show hey the lizard man twittered while he was here telling everybody he was on the air with us. That's interesting. He's the Lizard Man 23. So there's 23 other people that have the Lizard Man? I don't know if they went in numerical order, but it would indicate that somebody else had the Lizard Man proper handle. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Scott Twitter's in. Sorry he can't be there, but uh, he loves watching online. All right, he's checking us out. Josh wants to know what iPhone app to use to listen to the show. I recommend one called Wonder Radio. It's uh, one of the ones that uh, the, it costs you. I think it's like 5 bucks or four ninety nine or something like that, but it is crystal clear. I stream uh, 1360 AM Rational Radio on it all the time, so I recommend Wonder Radio. And you can also get the Ustream.tv app and uh, watch it on your uh, phone as well. So please, please uh, check all that out and follow us at Twitter.com forward slash Hunter Show. All right, with whatever time I got left, Hurley, let's uh, hit the hard drive. All right, this, of course, the point of the uh, portion of the show where we feature the audio that corresponds with the day's timely headlines, and uh, I refer to my political hard drive cut sheet here. Let's uh, let's move all the way up to, uh, boy, I sound like Rick Dees for a second, like I'm doing the countdown. <laughs> let's uh, move all the way up to uh, number 13, 13 on the countdown. Yeah. Uh, Ron Paul audio, that's always entertaining. It seems that he has been, boy, he's late to the party. How does he not recognize Sasha Baron Cohen at this point? How does that happen? You know, he's old. Hadn't he seen or, the Pat Buchanan YouTube video? Here, here's my theory. He's old, he doesn't know. Or somebody in his camp knows. And this is like, you know what? Let's get Ron Paul out there, get that revolution going. Like his grandson. Yes. And that's they're like, a, yeah, let's play a prank on him or just yeah. don't let him know. But we know it's going to make 
uh, the movies, YouTube, everything's going to be out there to get his name out. Okay, well, the star of Borat, Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, pranked Ron Paul, but not as Borat. It's his new character, uh, Bruno. Isn't that what the new character's called? Yes. Yeah, Bruno. It's like a, what is he? He's like a, a gay, He's gay fashion des designer, designer yeah. or something? Okay. All right, uh, first up, Cut 13, Ron Paul explains how he was pranked by Sasha Baron Cohen as Bruno. All of a sudden, you know, I was in this room, which they had it all fixed up as a bedroom. So getting me there was sort of, you know, just uh, dishonesty, getting me into the into the interview. I was expecting an interview on Austrian economics. So, <laughs> so that didn't turn out that way. But by the time he started pulling his pants down, I got, <laughs> what in thunder is going on here? I ran out of the room. <laughs> so this, this interview has ended. <laughs> so uh, when, when that happened, I, I think, though, when this all gets out, I'm probably going to have to apologize to my supporters because I think most of them are going to figure out why in the world didn't I sock this guy in the nose. <laughs> Holy cow, man. Sasha Baron Cohen just sold another movie ticket. Do you think, I, I got my wallet out. Do you think that's an ender if you were to do an interview? That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> Drop your pants. You know what? I'd like to say yes, but sadly the answer is probably no with the crowd that we run with. That's true, yeah. Uh, then yeah, that's boy, that sounds great. Now, uh, Ron Paul continues uh, here on uh, his interfacing with Sasha Baron Cohen, best known as Borat, with his uh, Bruno character. Let's continue. Tonight I was sitting here watching uh, Gone with the Wind, so I don't watch that kind of stuff. And, and I understand he makes a lot of money, but if he makes a lot of money, which is, you know, I have to permit the market to do this, I don't like the idea that he is... He, he lies his way in an interview. That, to me, is fraud. But the fact that he has raunchy material and people buy into it, it's, it's, uh, it's sort of sad that that is a reflection of our culture. To me, it's a real shame that people are going to reward him with millions and millions of dollars for being so crass. <laughs> Well, if Ron Paul thinks that that is sad, then he clearly has not seen Borat, which is one of the greatest movies in recent he's, he's cinematic watching history. Gone with the Wind. <laughs> he's not watching anything that's Borat like. Well, that Borat film was genius, and I'll tell you what, I am still bitter about the fact that uh, it, it, if you've seen the Borat film, and you have, Turley, oh, yeah. you know the scene with the, uh, the Southern etiquette where he goes yeah. to the house to yeah. learn how to be a Southern gentleman? And then, right. surprisingly, yeah. things uh, things fall apart. Well, it turns out that on the Mississippi side of my family, my aunt teaches etiquette. I didn't even know this. Her and her sister do these Southern etiquette, etiquette classes. Right. And uh, they were contacted by the Borat producers. They would have originally been in that position in the film... They contacted him. They said uh, he was from, um, what's that country he claims he's from? Uh, uh, Kazakhstan. No, it's not Kazakhstan, is it? I think so, yeah. I think it's something else Astan. Anyway, where he's, yeah, wherever Borat yeah. is from. Uh, yeah, it is, Kazakhstan. Could, all right. Uh, that uh, they, they thought it was a foreign documentary. And then they sit down and he, well, you know, you need to see the film. But... I thought my aunt was so relieved, so relieved that they did not get taken advantage of by that. And I thought, what a bummer. How awesome. would that, that right there would probably be more impressive than anything I've ever done in my broadcast career is to be able to tell people that my aunt got screwed with in the Borat <laughs> movie. What a oh, bummer. Oh, my darling Richard. Yeah. Well, another bummer. And I don't know if I want to call the gentleman out or not. but somebody's, we, Did somebody just die? Well, I didn't, you were talking about a bummer here, and I kind of think you saw this here. A gentleman picked up. There's two flyers that we have by our laptop. Yeah. One's the uh, uh, female hanging by her hair. Knees. Is that? No, yeah. no, knees. Okay. That's Alan Faulkner's uh, uh, birthday party performance tonight. And then the other flyer is, of course, you. Right. Talking about the show being uh, launched hanging here. Hanging for my knees. Uh -huh. The gentleman picked both of them up. Looked at him, put yours down. Damn it. Yeah, I know. Right in front of me, too. Yes. That it, maybe, <laughs> maybe, well, let me think optimistically. Maybe he only had room in his pocket for one. He took the chick, though. Doesn't that disappoint you? Well, that's okay. You know what? I'd, I, I'd, rather, uh, I'd rather the guy go out and enjoy, uh, enjoy Alan's show. Okay. All right. You know, another uh, show that's always entertaining is, uh, is the Sarah Palin show. 
Okay. And uh, she was in Indiana, which is where most of Alaska's state business is done. Uh, she was in Indiana entertaining at a uh, uh, anti-choice rally, and uh, or she, she was choice? she was out there. Yeah, she was out there uh, speaking. There was there was a group that she spoke to uh, families that had kids with yeah. Down syndrome. Yeah, but the the whole pro-choice pro-life angle got uh, worked into it. Let's let's hear uh, cut eleven. Uh, Sarah Palin telling everybody how uh, Bar Barack Obama hates kids being born. Life for every baby, no matter what today's society wants to try to tell us is worthy life or perfect life, I cannot wait for you to get to meet Trig Paxson Van Palen. He turns one year old on Saturday and he is our gift from God. He's proven to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that every innocent life does have purpose and there is no accident. Innocent life is to be cherished and protected, and may our culture embrace that. The culture of life affects every aspect of our lives and society, and we must stand on the life-honoring foundation of our very republic, and we must speak out against actions that erode that foundation. Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't All be right. afraid uh, to hello. voice your opinion. When you see our it. president through policy changes, want to erode part of that foundation. Ugh. These people. She's using her kid as a prop. These these gift from God people. I tell you what, I wish I had it as easy as God. I wish everything that I did was perceived as a gift or a plan or some mysterious way in you know, which I was working. It's never Start it's, claiming that it, though. It, it, it's never a shortcoming. It's never a, 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 a screw up. It's never a genetic imbalance. It's never a uh, a biological abnormality, it's a gift. Well, you need to start claiming everything's a gift then. Well, I can't really start doing that till I get my cult up and running. Oh. <laughs> All right, do I have time for more? What no, are we doing? No. Damn it. Damn it. He does work in mysterious ways sometimes. <laughs> he shortened my hard drive segment. All right, well, we uh, everything we didn't get to today, we will present for you Monday and then some. Uh, we will have uh, fantastic guests joining us Monday. We will have... Um, 420 Talk. 420 Talk. There's going to be plenty of that. National Pot Legalization Day, I like to think of it as. We'll be doing that uh, on Monday back at the studio. There's still time to come out here and join us at the Men's Club, I-35 and Northwest Highway. Go to the Lizard Lounge tonight. Check out the big show going on over there. All the details at richardhuntershow.com. We'll see you Monday, 4 o'clock on 1360 AM. You're listening Good job, guys. to Rational Radio.